In today's show, we look back at Thursday in the NBA. There were some weird performances, some big performances, some interesting performances, but there were six games that we're going to talk about all of them, as well as waiver wire transaction trends, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble, on TikTok at RedRock underscore Beeble, and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. A busier show than usual for Thursday because we've got six games on. We don't normally have that many on. I actually like it. It's pretty cool. Rather than having those stupid two-game Thursdays, but here we are. We're talking about six games. They're all on. We've got news to cover. We've got oh, we've got some great stuff on. Let's go. Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> all right. Uh, news that dropped since I did the preview show for tomorrow. Uh, Landry Shamet, Cameron Payne out again. So the Jock Land- Landale, Josh Kogi. Dwayne Washington Jr. triumvirate are going to be trying to fill in for Booker. Tory Craig gets that boost. Yeah, I don't love adding a Kogi or Landale or Washington, really. They'd just be sort of flyers. There's nine games on. I reckon you can find better options out there. Larry Nance is doubtful. Um, that's not ideal, obviously. Um, yeah, again, like I said on a few shows, if you want to drop him, drop him. He's got really specific skills. In a points league, he's not useful. In a category league, when he's hurt, get rid of him. And then pick back up later on if you need that. Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday. Well, Drew's actually doubt, actually doubtful, but Middleton's out again. I don't know what's happening with his knee injury. They don't appear to think it's anything serious, but this is a knee injury that came out of nowhere, and we still you know, don't know when he's coming back. The buy low is wide open. Do not drop Chris Middleton, but the buy low is massively open. You can get him for nothing. Clinker Palace out again. So Nyeka Okongwu must roster player. And Jamal Murray, even though I thought last game he was resting due to a back-to-back, they've labeled him questionable again. Aaron Gordon and Bruce Brown, no problem. They're both questionable. But I didn't think Murray would be, and he is. So if we did have Bones Highland, we just hold and see what happens. I don't think Murray's going to sit. But it is curious they labeled him questionable with a day's rest in between that back-to-back. That's, it's, it's, a little, um, it's a little worrying. I hope it's nothing major. Um, but we obviously have to pay some attention to that. And hopefully that it is uh, all okay. Let's look at the waiver wire. The most added player over the last 24 hours is Emmanuel Quickly up 25%. Largely because we knew Barrett was out and you know, Brunson was potentially going to be out. Brunson did end up being out. It's a good ad. The Bronco, Jalen Williams. Broncos country, let's ride. I think people added him because Pokyshevsky was out. I don't know why that impacted their decision. Williams was playing the same minutes irrespective of Poku being in or out. And Poku wasn't a guy that was necessarily taking the ball out of Williams' hands. Um, Good ad. You know my thoughts on him. I've been pretty explicit with those. Alec Burks. Alec Burks. Up 16%. We still don't have any update. I hoped I would have had an update by the time I recorded this about suspensions for the Pistons and Magic. I do not. I still expect Killian Hayes is going to be suspended. Three games, probably five, maybe more. And Burks is a good good opportunity to stream there. It might be Corey Joseph that old mate Dwayne Casey starts instead, which would kill us. But Burks would be a good ad. Nico Batum up 14%. Good for the schedule today. I'm not convinced he's must roster, but good for a schedule stream. Jeremy Sohan. Sohan now. Had been playing well. Starting. Worth, worth a crack. And let's see what happens. Dan Gafford up 10%. I do like that one. He is starting for the Wizards. I think don't think it's really related to Beal's injury. And he doesn't need Beal to be in or out. Hey, just as I'm talking, we have got um, suspension news coming. So I'm just going to go read them and then come back and talk about it. All right, we'll get to that suspension stuff in a second. I just created a, a graphic for it. Um, what was I Dan Gafford up 10%. I do like that one. 
with the Wizards going with that big lineup. He's worth an ad. Naz Reed up 8%. Yeah, let's just keep rolling until we hear about Kyle Anderson, who's questionable tomorrow. And Norman Powell up 8%. I'm going to guess that's a stream for today. I don't really like him as a long-term 12-team league guy. Now, let's talk suspensions. Killian Hayes, three games. So Alec Burks is at least a three-game stream. If Killian Hayes is your worst player and he's out three games, you can drop him if he's your worst player. Mo Wagner out two games. He's a clear drop. See you later, Mo. The following players received a one-game suspension. Hamadou Diallo, Cole Anthony, Mo Bamba, Wendell Carter Jr., Gary Harris, Kavon Harris, Franz Wagner, RJ Hampton, and Admiral Schofield. All of those guys got a one-game suspension. But important to note that Franz Wagner will be able to play on Friday. He will be suspended along with Kavon Harris, or Kevon Harris, Kevon Harris, and Admiral Schofield. They will sit their suspension the Magic's next game, which is Wednesday next week. So, out tomorrow for the Magic as Mo Wagner, Cole Anthony, Mo Bumba, Wendell Carter, Gary Harris, and RJ Hampton. They're all out tomorrow. On Wednesday, it'll be Mo Wagner, Fro Franz Wagner, Kayvon Harris, and Admiral Schofield that'll be out. And then for the Pistons, it's Hayes and Diallo that are suspended. So, basically, everyone that we expected to be suspended was, was suspended for that amount of time. We got the three games for Hayes, which is, a th I think I just said he'll get three, maybe five. And Diallo gets, or and Wagner gets two. So basically everything that we expected. On the Magic side of things, in terms of um, streaming guys in, they're only going to have eight players available to Magic. And those players are projected starting lineup, Fultz, Ross, Wagner, Franz, Bunkero, and Bowl. That's how I think they're going to start. Because there's no Bumba, there's no Carter, right? And then the three bench players will be Caleb Houston, Kayvon Harris, and Admiral Schofield. So I think those three bench guys, Houston, Harris, Schofield, probably play 20 minutes each. Um, so the only real, honestly, streamable guy here is probably Ross. Like, make sure Fultz is rostered. Add him. If Ross gets 30 minutes, maybe he's a stream. But Houston, Harris, Schofield? Deeper league? Sure. I don't really see them as 12-team guys. And then when you get to the Wednesday game next week, the only major um, rotation players out of the two Wagners. And then you get a little bit of a boost to Fultz, a boost to Bunkero, a boost to Bowl. Um, Bumba gets playing time. So it's not a massive stream orgy here. Because again, the only guy I think that really boosts into 12 discussions is Ross. And then you've got Houston Harris and um, Kevon Harris and Admiral Schofield who get those bench minutes. And I'm not sure you know, how useful they're going to be. So there you go. We got that news. Great. Good to have it. Let's look at the most dropped players now on the waiver wire. And number one is Austin Reeves. Totally, totally understand dropping Austin Reeves. He's down 27%. Lonnie Walker down 20%. I've encouraged that for weeks. Bruce Brown down 14%. I reckon that's probably a little bit premature, but okay, fair enough. Mo Wagner down 14%. We just talked about Mo Wagner. Yes, he is a drop. Larry Nance down 12%. It's a high percentage, but I understand it. Totally get it. Tony Warren Jr. down 11%. If I added him, I'd probably give him a little bit more grace than the one game. But, you know, people are impatient. Adrian Griffin, he's only a streamer. And DeAndre Hunt has been injured, down 6%. I guess that's what it takes for people to drop DeAndre Hunt for him to not play, to realize that he's not useful in 12-team leagues. But both, uh, well, no, he has now been dropped in 6% 6 of leagues, which is great. Today's episode is brought to you by NHTSA. You're with some friends and you're knocking back a few drinks. A few becomes a few too many, but as the evening comes to an end and people start to head out, you think of calling for a ride. Nah, you live nearby, you can make it home, okay? It's no big deal. What are the odds you get pulled over anyway? And even so, what's the worst that can happen? Your insurance goes up, you lose your license, you lose your job, you total your car, you kill someone. Everyone knows about the risks of driving drunk. The results are tragic and often deadly. However, that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again. Play it safe and plan ahead to get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. Okay, let's look at the game. Games. There's six of them, so let's do games. First one of them is the Cleveland Cavaliers. They lose to the Indiana Pacers, who continue to be frisky. 135-126. On the Cleveland side, um, Chetty Osman was out, along with Dean Wade. So they just went narrow, eight-man rotation only. And that's why we see someone like Dracaris Levert Dracaris. play 35 minutes. So he scored well, 19 points. It 
took 17 shots and 41% to get there and he didn't really do much in the rebounds and assists. He had a steal on a block. I'm not using this as an encouragement to add him. I'm just not. What we do have to watch is Darius Garland, who 18, 1 and 8 is not bad. 73% shooting is great. Missed both his free throws. That's bad. But he hurt his thumb. And he hurt it late. He came back in with it wrapped up, but we need to see if anything actually happened there because it's on his shooting hand as well. That could be an issue. Jarrett Allen, 19, 14, a steal and a block. While Evan Mobley, 13, 7 with 7 assists and 2 steals and a block. A fantastic game from Mobley. While Don Mitchell... He's gone. He's good. 28, 4 and 6. Efficiency has been way down, and it was here again, 40% and 75 from the line, but good counting stats. And Kevin Love had 12 and 6, and Okoro had 10 and 3, part of that bench group. That's a really good illustration, actually. Eight, eight-man rotation, which is what we're going to see the Magic play. The three, three guys there, 21, 21, 21 minutes, which is what I think we're going to have from Schofield, Harris, and the guy that's escaped my mind here. Schofield, Harris, and Houston. Caleb Houston. There you go. For the Pacers. Halliburton was questionable heading into this game. 29, 2 and 9, 6 threes, 2 steals. Excellent shooting. He's been unbelievable. He's basically exactly what we wanted. We wanted. We picked him around 10 to 12. He's the 10th ranked player. Well, what more could you ask for, seriously? Miles Turner talked about him on the buy low show saying, man, where are the blocks? Can you give me some blocks? Talked about him this morning, actually, with Robin on the um, mailbag show. So, like, yeah, it's a massive buy low. 35 minutes, 14 and 12, 6 blocks. There you go. There they are. Bang. Budrick Heald had 25 points, but the big fella, Aaron Neesmith, 22 points. Now, that's very good. There is, and he had a gigantic dunk as well. It's very good. He also fouled out. Uh, no, did he? No, he didn't. Sorry, he had four fouls. That's very good. But, but, pour some cold water. 22 points, two rebounds, one assist. And to get here, he had to shoot 70% from the field, and he still only played 28 minutes. This is not a reliable outcome for him to be this good. And even then, that's not a spectacularly good number. It's fine. 22 points is good, but there's nothing else there. And it took 70% to actually get there. On a 50% night, he's at 16, 2, and 1. And that's still okay. But a 40% night, it's 14, 2, and 1. Like, ugh. Maybe 13, 2, and 1 if one of those misses is a 3. Like, it's, that's like just fine. But he just got red hot. Now, you can have him in a 12 team league, but I don't really see a scenario where Neesmith absolutely anchors himself into your lineup where you go, I've got to hold this guy. I've got to hold this guy. Like, what situation does it take for him to not be your worst player, therefore not a streaming spot? And I'm not really sure it gets there. Nempard, 3-3-4, three, three, and four, like he is a clear drop, as is old mate Sticks. Stand by your man! Just a disaster of a draft pick, a disaster of a projection for me. Just shocking. 5-1-1, one, one, piss him off. And Duarte went scoreless in 11 minutes, missed all four of his shots, had an injury to the head. He is obviously not a 12 or a 14 team league player either. Um, I didn't talk about Humpty Dumpty. I probably should have because he had a better game. Benedict Matherin, 23 points, but you're going to be shocked to know this. Nothing else. Three rebounds, one assist. Eight of nine from the line is great, but he continues to struggle from a category league perspective. Not a must roster 12 team league guy. Maybe there's upside later on, but the production we've had so far has not been worthy of that sort of rostering. Let's go on to the second game of the day. It was the Thunder and the Hornets. The Hornets win it 121-113. The Thunder were without Pokiszewski, so they started Pig Williams. Next to the Bronco, Jalen Williams. Let's talk about the big Jalen Williams, the tall Jalen Williams, the Vietnamese legend Jalen Williams. 24 minutes for him and missed all five of his shots. But he did have 10 rebounds and got a block. It's at least watchable, all right? We want to watch. Like, 24 minutes from a center can be 12-team valuable. We just talked about it with Daniel Gafford. If Mo Bumble was to play 24 minutes, he'd be a 12-team league player. And maybe Pig Williams can do that. I'd say even a 16-team league, I'd grab 14, maybe. But they've still got options they can use, like the Moose, Mike Muscala, who had three points in 19 minutes. Obviously, he's not the 12-team answer. And I think they're going to move back and forth between these guys. Let's look at some good performances, though. Shea, 28, 3, and 5. Missed a couple of free throws, which is disappointing. Giddy, 21, 10, and 3. Hit all seven of his, which is a surprise, to be sure. Isn't it, Sheev? A surprise, to be sure, but a welcome one. It's also a good game from Lou Dort. Now, Dort only played 28 minutes due to foul trouble. 28 points, 5 threes, and 2 steals. Still think Dort's only a streamer for category leagues. Fine for points leagues to roster in 12s, not for, not for category leagues. And the Bronco, Jalen Williams. Broncos country, let's ride. Not his best night with only 27 minutes, but 15, 5, and 1, two threes. Still, still just maintains that value. 115th over the last week. That's a 12-team league guy. And we've got upside to get better. 
luxury stash, pushing more towards usable 12-team player. Trey Mann had 17 with not a lot else. Didn't shoot the three ball really well. What is he? One of nine from three. Gross. That's, so that could have been a monster game. He had 33 usage, which is also probably a misappropriation of um, shot attempts on that team, but he did. And that makes you want to pay some attention in deeper leagues. For the Hornets, this is where we have to start. Oh, hi, Mark. Now I'm going to say, I'll tell you now I was skeptical about this because this report came out from Steve Clifford and the Hornets saying that even if Nick Richards was available, that Mark Williams would get the backup minutes and then Richards would be like 100% uh, the next game moving forward. I thought, okay, so Williams will be the backup today and then Richards will get it back and Williams will go back to third string. And I said, like, I'm not sure about that. And then and Jonas Nader, who you know, you know Jonas, who's been on this show before, Jonas was like, no, nah, like I'm really interested in watching this situation. Like, I don't really trust Clifford. Of course, Jonas went and grabbed Mark Williams straight away. And then Mark Williams played 21 minutes, had 17 and 13, two steals, two blocks on 100% shooting, and that's bloody good. And that sort of performance, it's not just those stats because, yes, he was going up against Jalen Williams, right? And Mike Muscala, not good centers. He was going up against nobody. But Mason Plumley didn't quite do that. And we saw in the first half, Mark Williams closing with, with the starters, not Plumley. That didn't happen at the end of the game, but it did happen at the end of the first half. I don't know how you justify a top 15 pick who played that well, moving back to not getting any minutes as the third string center. In some of your leagues, you'll know your league. You don't have to do anything here. In some of them, though, you have to make the ad now, even if it turns into nothing. With this game and the two previous games as a backup, Mark Williams is the 70th ranked player over the last week. It is really easy for centers who block shots with high field goal percentage to be very highly ranked fantasy players. It is very easy. Much like with Walker Kessler. I think that Mark Williams is a, it is a grab. It is not a must grab because he could go back to third string next game. He might stay at second string. And second string means, yeah, as Buzz Aldrin says in the Simpsons, Simpsons, second comes right after first. So if Plumlee goes down, then, unless you're Alex Lane Sacramento, then the backup assumes a larger role. And then we blow into a top 50 player. So I've added him in a league where I could. Well, my other leagues have fab, so if you're in those leagues, I'm going to be bidding on him. And I don't know if it's going to work out. If I'm in a 16-team league, it is an absolute no-brainer. 14-team league, I'd grab Mark Williams everywhere. And I don't, have, I don't know that it continues. I don't have confidence in Steve Clifford continuing it. But he said, mm, yeah, Richards is healthy, but we'll play Mark Williams. But that didn't give us confidence moving forward. But every Hornets person that I was hearing announces media people going, how do you stop him playing? How do you take him out after a game like this? How do you keep him out of the rotation? And I agree. And that's why I want to take the chance. I want to take the ch It might not work. I absolutely understand that, but I am taking the chance. LaMelo Ball, 27, 10, and 9. A steal and two blocks. That's just fantastic. Well, after I officially said I can't with PJ Washington anymore, I'm done with the bloke. He's a top 25 player now. Okay, cool. 25, 5, and 3. One steal, two blocks, 77% shooting, three threes. All right, if he was dropped, and I, I dropped him, like I said, forget this bullshit. It's ridiculous. Um, add him. But also, sell absolutely high. And if you get any top 70 offer, I would absolutely do it. I don't trust this level of shooting sticking, but it's been good. Mason Plumlee, well, he didn't wasn't quite as good as Mark Williams. He still had 14 and 9 with a steal and a block, the cockroach, on 86% shooting. Charlotte centers missed one shot all day, 13 of 14. And again, that is opponent base. They had nobody there to protect the rim. Jalen McDaniels, well, actually, let's talk Kelly Oubre, who took nine shots in 14 minutes, missed seven of them, and had six points with nothing else. He just is infuriating to watch. I don't think he's a 12-team league guy in category leagues. Points league, sure. At some point, you have to say, can you stop this terrible player taking all these shots? I don't know if Clifford will, who's rapidly moving into my bad coach list. Um, but Oubre got hurt. But what that means is Jalen McDaniels. 22 minutes, 12 points, two threes. That at least moves into a stream if Ubre does miss time. Let's talk Terry Rozier, another guy that shitted me to tears all season. 34 minutes, 10 points, 4 rebounds, 7 assists. Didn't hit a 3, missed all, four, all 5 of his attempts, shot 27%, and then couldn't hit free throws either, 4 of 6. No defensive stats. He's sucking continues. He's not a top 100 player this season. I am not dropping him. I understand if you do. If you do, I would add him. If you drop him, I will add him. I still think it's a gigantic buy low. But I'm losing faith. Like, I don't think he's last year's Terry Rozier. I don't think the shooting is coming back. At least not to that level. But bloody hell, this is dreadful. This is Nadia type of stuff. And, yeah, 
if they're at an idea, they're theoretically the only way you can go is up. Today's episode is brought to you by Rocket Money. Rocket, 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 we can't think. We can't think. Sorry, right. Mate. Yeah, come, Sorry. On, come on, come on, come on. Say goodbye to last year's outdated, disorganized methods of managing your money. And say hello to Rocket Money, the better way to hack your finances in 2023. Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill, is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions that they forgot about, like the streaming service that you brought to watch just one show or that free trial you never even used. Rocket Money will quickly and easily identify your subscriptions for you so you can stop paying for the ones that you don't want. Rocket Money makes cancelling subscriptions as easy as a click of a button. Simply find the subscription that you don't want and press cancel and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. No more long hold times with customer service or tedious emailing back or forth. Stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash locked on MBA. That's rocketmoney.com slash locked on MBA, rocketmoney.com slash locked on MBA. Let's go to the next one. The Grizzlies beat the Raptors 119-106. I'll talk about the Raptors in a second. But for Memphis, Ja Morant has 19-4 with 17 assists. He didn't kill your free throws because he didn't take any. So that's a positive. But still the problems with his game exist. That's not a, that's not a bad game at all. But no steals, 1-3. 47 from the field is pretty good. But still, he's not that elite fantasy guy that some seem to think he is. Desmond Bain got back on track. 16-5-4 and four with three threes and two steals, but he did foul out. While Dylan Brooksy Brooks, oh no. 34 minutes, 25 points. The big fella's back. 50% shooting, 88 from the line, six assists, four threes. I, I don't care. Like, I just don't. He's not a 12-team league guy, in my opinion. This was good, but I don't, I don't care. Steven Adams played 32 minutes, 14 and 17. And that meant Brandon Clark had four and six in 16 minutes. Brandon Clark is only a scheduled stream player and not a 12-team must roster. While Santi Aldama had to leave the game due to an ankle issue, six and five. Surely no one is still rostering him in 12-team leagues outside of scheduling. There was bigger minutes for Johnny Concha in 24 minutes. What? Because Bain fouled out. 11 and 7, one of his better games of late, but obviously we're only looking at him in deep leagues. Interestingly, Zaire Williams only played eight minutes for five points. He was pushing up higher than that earlier in the season, but lost a lot here. While Ty Jones, he remains just that luxury stash. Doesn't do anything when Jar's not when Jar's in. 4, 1, and 2. But when Jar is out, he's a top 100 player. You've got to make the call. I dropped him today in a league um, that I was stashing him so I could add Mark Williams. That's you know, You've got to look at those stash values there. But the Raptors. Everything about this is bullshit. Yes, Fred Van Bleet's out. Pressure Chew is out. I know that. But th- that's it. Like Otto Porter. All right, cool. Whatever. The, your lineup choices, it was so blatantly obvious that you are going to get punked. And three minutes into the game, they got smashed and they stopped it. Why this team, again, I think Nick Nurse is a good coach. I think he's losing his mind a little bit. And I think Masai Ujiri is a good GM. But they have made terrible decisions, I think, over the last couple of years. Having this team, and I don't even think it's necessarily about a center. Getting guys that can shoot and dribble. And then, when the guy that can shoot and dribble, Fred Van Vliet, is out, you don't start any guys that can shoot or dribble. They went with a starting lineup of Scott Barnes, Wancho Hernan Gomez, OG Ananobi, Pascal Siakam, and Christian Coloco. Now, in the second half, they benched Coloco and Hernan Gomez, which was obvious for Gary Trent and um, uh, Ken Birch. But, like, it doesn't make any sense. Yes, I know Malachi Flynn shot 17%. He had 6, 8, and 5. That's not a great game. But he did play 30 minutes. Like, just give some guys a chance. Like, the lineup construction doesn't make any sense at all. The roster construction didn't make any sense at all. Both are to blame. Siakam had 25, 10, and 4. Two steals and a block. Not a bad game. Gaz Trent, with Van Vliet out, there's great value here. 20 points, five threes, two steals. Just keep rolling with him. I don't know if it lasts, but keep rolling. And then Barnsley had a really quiet first half. Did have to go to the locker room, but really strong late. 14, 10, and four, three steals and a block. Not a great shooting night from Barnes. In fact, pretty bad. 39 from the field and missed his only free throw. The Jedi, Ogenanobi, had 16, three and three with two steals and a block. And even Chris Boucher got back into the mix. 13 and seven in 22 minutes. For a guy that they loved so much, Delano Banton, they had him in the G League while Jeff Doughton was getting back up minutes. Six points in 13 minutes for him. 
And as I said, Wancho played only 10 minutes, 11 minutes, sorry. Birch played 11 and Coloco played 13. These guys are just wastes. Like, why are we starting them? Why are they even key rotation pieces? I know that, you know, you roster... Look, there's just a lot of crap on this roster. And Achua will help and Van Vliet will help, obviously. But some really poor decision-making from the Raptors, I think, in numerous different areas. And for fantasy, what we do is, like, we... There's a bit of value in Trent. We can stream Flynn. They play again tomorrow, so I'm not sure if Fred's going to play or if Pressure's going to play. Flynn, 30 minutes is encouraging. Will he beat this bad? I don't know. Maybe. But the opportunity is there. I'd much rather try him than Coloco or Hernan Gomez. And then, they didn't even play Thad Young. Remember when he was playing 26 minutes a night? Now, well, now he's just not playing. I, I, I don't understand what they're doing a lot of this time with rotations and with lineup decisions. I, I don't get it. I don't know why you would ever look at Wancho Hernan Gomez and say, yeah, he's a guy we've got to persist with as a starter at the expense of shooting and dribbling. Like, yeah, we have to do it. it uh, surely, after the disaster that was the way that lineup looked today, that we don't see that again. Surely not. Next game, the Celtics beat the Clippers. 116-110 final score. Um, I'm here to announce to you that Kawhi is back. I'm a fun guy. <laughs> 37 minutes. 26, 8, and 3, three threes, one block, 69% shooting. Giggity. This is top 50 now over the last week. I think that per game he can hit top 30 from here on out. And yes, it was a bad start to the year. We had no idea that we had nothing could have told us that, hey, he will come off the bench in the first game and then have knee soreness and miss three weeks. No one could have told you that, right? What we are seeing now is the expectation that I had for Kawhi in draft season. He would sit every back to back, there'd be some rust but he'd just be rolling and playing at his level. We just got this delayed by four to five weeks from a mystery knee soreness that nobody ever really explained. This is why I was okay drafting him in round three, as long as I didn't have any other sort of injury risk players, because this is what I anticipated we would have seen five weeks ago. And I didn't expect to see him just be, oh, my knee is sore and sit for four weeks to start the year. Could you sell high on him? Maybe. If someone wants to give me something good back, then I'm, I'm in on it. He doesn't have a great playoff schedule for a lot of fantasy playoffs as well. Bear, bear in mind that. But he's rolling. Paul George, 24, 4 and 6, two steals, good game. Well, Nick Batum suffered an ankle sprain. That's why he played only eight minutes. It wasn't a great eight minutes. Two rebounds, two assists. And I do not believe he's a must roster 12-team league guy, as you're aware. Reggie Jackson had a trip to the locker room. He returned 8, 4 and 3. No. John Wall, 8, 1 and 4. No. Zubats, 30 minutes. Well, the minutes remain up. 13, 11, steal on a block. Bad from the line, but good otherwise. And we've got 31 Norman Powell minutes. And I reckon that's because Batum went to the locker room. But if Powell got 31, he would be a 12-team league guy. Unfortunately, he doesn't do anything apart from score. 19, 4 and 2. And was bad from the line and bad from the field. And 75 from the line on eight attempts is a negative. I know it doesn't seem like it's bad, but the league average is 80% in Fantasy League. So when you get under that and do it on high volume, it actually hurts. Sucks significantly. It might not seem it, but it does hurt. It drops you down. So I, I don't think that Norman Powell is a 12-team must. I've got no problem with him rostering him. I think he's just totally like a stream guy for 12s. Marcus Morris, he's also a stream. 12, 6, and 4, a steal, and a block. Not a bad line. Is he ever going to be a top 100 guy regularly? Probably not. And to me, that makes you a streamable guy versus an absolute got-to-hold must-roster player. On the Celtics, Rob Williams played 21 minutes, 12 and 6 a steal and a block, perfect from the field and the line. We love the minutes to go up, but it doesn't really matter that much. These numbers are pretty strong. Marcus Smart played 37 minutes, 17-3 a night, and Maximum Derek White also played 37 minutes. Maximum Derek. And that's a great game from White, 15-2 and 4 with two blocks. Remember that Brogdon was out though, and we got six minutes only of Peyton Pritchard. So, a bit of a sell high for White. I don't think he's a long-term 12-team league guy, but that was good. And if he continues to play 30 a night, which he had before, even before Brogdon went out, there's interest in that. Jalen Brown, 29-7. and seven. Jason Tatum, 29-11. Unfortunately, um, Tatum just stunk both from the field and the line. 39-60 and 60 on big volume. That really hurts your overall line. Well, we've got 32 minutes from Al Horford. Eight and seven. Two blocks, two threes, two assists. 60%, so 50% shooting. Master roster player. In a points league, Maybe not. He's ranked 120th, averaging 25 Yahoo standard points. But you can tell if someone's a must roster in your points league. Are they your worst player on their averages of the season over the last month, over the last two weeks? Are their fantasy points averages similar to a guy on the waiver wire? And if they are similar to guys on the waiver wire, then that player is not must roster. 
That is the, it's the easiest rule of thumb you will find. You look at multiple different things. Does he average 25? Does your waiver wire guy average 23? Then streaming that spot is a lot better than holding onto him. In a category league, it's very different. This is a top 100 player who needs to be rostered. But you need to be able to understand how to value things based on your own league settings. Let's do the next game. This was the Knicks going down to the Spurs, 122-115. The Knicks were without um, RJ Barrett and Jalen Brunson, so they did start Emmanuel quickly and Juice McBride. Massive minutes for quickly again, 43 of them, and he delivered. 36, 7, and 7, 5 threes, 88 from the line, 44 from the field on 27 attempts. Until further notice, he's a 12-team league guy. We knew that if he got minutes, he had a chance of providing good value, and he's getting them. They probably won't last, but he's getting them. Julius Randle also continue a really, really strong run. 41, 11, and 7 with six threes on 52%. The free throws were bad, but he's on fire at the moment, really putting up good numbers. A bit of a sell high, but I'm not sure you get enough value back. With... Those guys out, Brunson and Barrett, they started Juice McBride. He didn't really do anything. Nine points with two threes. He's a stream option, I guess, if these guys remain out. And they did not go to Cam Reddish, which is disappointing. They played Derek Rose and Ivan Fournier. Fournier had 11 points in 17 minutes. Rose had three points in 16 minutes. No point for that at all. That's shit coaching. Cam Reddish, I know, I don't think he's that good, but it's shit coaching to play those guys over him. Quentin Grimes stunk. Nine points on 10%, but at least he brought two steals and hit six of six from the line. Remains a 12-team league guy. Not convinced he's a 12-team points guy. He is a 12-team category guy. And uh, Robinson went scoreless. Cool. He did have a block. He did have six rebounds, but he'd been playing well. And this was not one of those games that was good. It just wasn't. He was bad. Hardenstein had four and five, but he continues to really struggle. And Jericho Sims playing 11 minutes is always weird. Onto the Spurs, there was no Devin Vassell, so the horse, Keldon Johnson, had to take over. And often, when you hear the horse, Keldon Johnson's taking over everything, you worry. Whose horse is that? But the big fella delivered. 30 and 3, 1 assist, 52 from the field, and 100% from the line. But what I talked about with him over the last couple of days is that the negative impact of his percentages can be so rough, and he can't offset it because he doesn't do anything else. Three rebounds, one assist, zero steals. He did have two blocks, but he just doesn't bring up those big counting stats. This was a good game, but we know that we can't really rely upon it every night. With Vassell out, Romeo Langford, who'd literally been out of the rotation, started, played 28 minutes and scored 23 points on 69% shooting. Giggity. I don't really buy into this at all, and I was hoping that it'd be Malachi Branham, who had four points on seven shots. It wasn't. So that Branham exuberance that I had, it still stands for Dynasty Leagues in deeper formats. It's just not going to push into, into the other ones into the shallower formats. 29 minutes for Yucca Pertle. All the Yucca Pertle complainers can start. Stop complaining. 29 minutes, 9 and 12, two blocks. I don't know. You can ask for a huge amount more than that, to be honest. And even though everyone has been complaining, he's top 70 over the last week. So again, I don't really know what more you wanted. Jeremy Sohan. It's an okay game, and I'll take that. It's not a bad game. 12, 5 and 1, no threes with a block. 57%, 27 minutes. Totally good. 12-team guy. Sure, let's go with it. Trey Jones had 13, 7, and 6. Unfortunately, he butchered both your percentages. Well, Joshie Richardson played 19 minutes, and Stan Johnson played 17. Both of those guys scored 9 points. And Zach Collins, who was getting a little bit of value with Pirtle being restricted, he only played 18 minutes, so that Zach Collins sort of semi-ad stream slash hole to see, you, could, you move on now. With Pirtle playing 29, you move on from Collins. If Pirtle plays 24 and Collins gets 24, then Collins is value. But that's not the case. Looks like restriction is over. We celebrate that. And we drop Zach Collins. And then we go to the last game of the night. Big blowout here for the Mavs. 129-114 over the Rockets. Kevin Porter Jr., 17-4-7. Rough from the field, but great from the line. And he hit four threes. Overall, pretty good performance. Jalen Green, 23-4-4 with four threes. Not a bad performance. Bad from the line, though. Yeah, solid enough. Jabari Smith bounced back, 16-4. and four. Didn't hit a three and didn't have a block, but yeah, not bad. It's top 75 over the last week still. And unfortunately for the delicate dancer, El Prince-Shagoon, he had five fouls and played 17 minutes. Now, he was off to a pretty strong start. He had 11-7 and seven with an assist. It was five of six from the line. But these last two games, you can really use that as a big buy-low opportunity. It's going to be frustrating for Shagoon, no doubt. And you're going to get frustrated having him. But if you don't have him, these last two games are a good way to, to, to try and get him at a lower price. 
With Eric Gordon back, KJ Martin played 17 minutes and Eric Gordon had four points on 0 of 7 shooting. Why he plays is a mystery to anybody. And Tari preseason, 6 and 8 with a block, 18 minutes. I still believe in Eason. I believe in him all through the preseason. I believe in him as a good impact player, but my thing with him always has been, how does he get enough minutes on a team with a bad coach and four players in his position, Martin, Gordon, Tate, and even Smith playing at the four? I've been talking about him as a luxury stash. I think I'm done with it. I, I don't see... We've seen Gordon miss games. Eason doesn't play 25. And now Tate's going to come back. I, I, don't, I don't... I don't see it. Unfortunately, for him this season with poor coaching, like if I was coaching this team, he would be playing 25 a night easily every night. But I'm not. Probably for a good reason. But we can't have faith that it's happening any point soon for Tari Eason. For the Dallas Mavericks... Oh, stunning. Yeah. Yeah. Luca, 35, 12, and 13, a steal, two blocks. Good from the field. 75 from the line on high attempts isn't great, but good nonetheless. While Christian Wood only played 21 minutes because he had five fouls, but he blocked four shots. That's, I think, eight games in a row that he's blocked more than two shots or two shots or more. And he had been blocking no shots at all. He's a top 10 player over the last week. That's a huge sell high. I think there is top 50 in him rest of season. So just be careful on a sell high. 15, 4, and 6 for Dinwiddie with 35 minutes. While Hardaway did what he needed, 18 points. He added three threes. He added three steals. He shot poorly, but the volume was there. They had to start Frank Nilakina because Reggie Bullock and Dorian Finney-Smith are out. He didn't do anything. They also said that we're going to play a lot of minutes of Jaden Hardy, and he got 12. While McKinley Wright, the fourth, played 23 minutes for two points. That bench, Wright, Hardy, Walker, even included Nilakina, Pinson, McGee, Bertans, offer nothing. It was five guys, and one of them was Dwight Powell, who put up good numbers. 19-6 and six for Powell in 21 minutes with two blocks on 100% shooting. I thought he might have had an increased role with a lot of these guys out, but I couldn't say I thought this would happen. He went scoreless last game. He's not a 12 or a 14-team league guy usually, and he wouldn't have been even much of an option today. But he played well, and we sort of look at it and go, all right, I don't actually think we need to care too much about that as we move forward. The monstrous line of the night is the big fella in Dallas, Luka Doncic. The waiver wire and the young gun of the night are both Mark Williams. Oh, hi, Mark. And the dud of the night is Terry Rozier. Your top 10 players in category leagues today. Number one, Doncic, followed by LaMelo Ball, Tyrese Halliburton, Miles Turner, Julius Randle, Emmanuel Quickly, PJ Washington Jr., Kawhi Leonard, Mark Williams, and Budrick Heald. Your top 10 players rostered in under 50% of leagues. Williams at one. Talked about him at length. Going at him. Neesmith, fine, but I don't really buy it. Dwight Powell, no thanks. Langford, no thanks. I don't really see that as things to care about. Karis Levert's a 14-team league guy. Josh Richardson's a 16-team league guy. John Conchar, good game, but no. Ushman Garuba, I didn't even mention Garuba's line in the Rockets game. What did he have? He was all right there. Nine and nine with two steals, but that's just honestly just deep league stuff. The Bronco, Jalen Williams at number nine on this list. 12-teamer, sure, no problem. And Boucher, I, I don't trust it either. And for points, each your top 10 players today. Doncic, Randall, Ball, Quickly, Siakam, Turner, Halliburton, Morant, Mark Williams, and Donovan Mitchell. And that, guys, will do it for me today. Don't forget to follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and the Odyssey app. And if you're here on YouTube, thumb it up. Leave your comments down below. Subscribe and ring the notification bell. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.